Hello everybody, this is Swiss. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to talk about variables creation. I'm going to quickly show you the process from A to Z on how to come up with an idea and how to go all the way to publishing your wearable item, your clothing item in Decentraland. All right, so let's quickly watch the intro and get started. Should we? All right, so in the background, you see the final product worn by me inside the central end. But this has actually been quite a process of getting into this stage. A lot of people are now creating their own wearable items in Decentraland. This is a new possibility that we have and people are really playing around with it. They're taking advantage of that. Previously, only a few selected teams were able to create their own wearable items as well as the Decentraland team. But now every community member who knows how to use the Blender software and who has the skills and who has um, 500 mana for one item can actually go through that whole process and I'm just gonna very quickly run you through this process I'm not gonna create a tutorial video there are a couple of things that I just do not feel confident enough to make a tutorial about so I'm just gonna keep it a broad process uh, video which I think is a great place to start just to get you an idea of what it takes so in the end of the day you do come up with a wearable idea, you want to create a clothing item, and you have to think how you can actually realize that idea inside Decentraland, because the graphics in Decentraland are somewhat simplified. So many of the things that you may want to do may not be visually as attractive in Decentraland. Like, I face this issue with the fact that a tuxedo normally is supposed to be black, but the thing is, if you do actually an item completely black, and you can see this with the shoes and with the color, if you make something completely black, it actually looks weird. It looks too dark. And you then start to realize why the central end doesn't look, doesn't use black that much. It's most of the time a dark shade of gray that is used to represent black. And these are kind of little lessons that you learn along the way. Um, how to you know how to get around some of these issues that you do not even know that they could possibly exist so black and white are very tough to work with and you can see here for example on the shirt i have included an element that is a little bit kind of grayish and this is another way of kind of working with that issue of white and black if you will so this is just a specific example of what i experienced but you may be experiencing other issue but i'm just trying to say that if you have an idea of a specific wearable making it work in the central end can sometimes be a bit of a challenge so you need to be aware of that so you need to come up with a good plan how that full outfit is going to look like and what the elements you need to have um, so if you actually use the central end you will probably already know that there are certain slots that you can that you can use on a on an avatar so there is this upper component here the top component the upper body there is the lower body the pants you cannot see that right now it's behind my back and then you have the shoes here and then of course you have something in the head spot let me quickly pull that up you have masks earrings eyewear and so forth so there are these there are these predefined spots that you can populate with an item and you need to kind of think that through if you have a if, if you have an idea for a character for an avatar for a full outfit how you are going to subdivide it into these different slots and this can be tricky sometimes because for a tuxedo or for a santa suit it's just in theory i mean it would just be best to have one full suit without the ability of splitting it up into pants and shoes. But this is currently not available in Decentraland. It looks like it might be something that will be available in the future. For now it is not. So you do have to split it up into individual components or you have to go through the process of negotiating with a Decentraland team if they would actually approve that or not. I don't know if they would. You could theoretically squeeze 
and allocate all of the outfit into the upper body slot. I, th I think in theory it is possible. We have tried to do this, but we never submitted it for review. So right now, this outfit here in the background consists out of three items. All right, I wanted to cover that because it's an important component that you need to consider uh, when planning your wearable. What's next? All right, let me think. So, what I did before launching into Blender, and let me uh, bring up the Blender screen here. When I launched, I didn't launch right away inside Blender. I felt like it was really important to have someone really good and someone who is experienced with fashion to put together a simple, good-looking, current design for a tuxedo. We have pulled together a couple of images of you know modern contemporary tuxedos. We've stripped some of those of any kind of complexities that were difficult to realize inside a simplified graphic user interface like we have in Decentraland. Um, and then based on that 3D design, we started to work inside Blender. And um, the best way, and I think this is how most people work with Blender, is that they actually download a sample file from the repository. And let me show you that particular page. Here it is. So this is on github.com. You actually have a Decentraland repository. I will include that link in the description here to make your life easier. But you can actually drill down here through the hierarchy and find the body shapes. And then you can, for example, select the base male body shape. And when you download that .glb file, you can actually go back to Blender and import it and start working with it. And the advantage of doing that is, of course, that that armature, that skeleton, that fundamental avatar infrastructure is already in place and it's ready to go. And you really just need to work on the outer shell, the mesh around that armature. Now, what where I needed most help with is actually with that skinning or weight painting process where you define the relationship between the actual clothing items and that armature, that skeleton, that avatar framework. There is a bit uh, of work in that space that I'm not familiar at all with and you need to either learn it. I think there is plenty of material on YouTube on that topic but there is also some guidance in the KJ Walker YouTube video on that wearables creation process. You will find it on YouTube um, that kind of illustrates on how to work with weight painting. There is some documentation on the website as well, but I prefer to work with someone who is already experienced in that space to kind of speed up that process for me. All right, so here again, you know, we have split up the suit in three different objects. Each object is allocated to a slot inside the central end, and um, that was relatively straightforward. One component that was new to me um, is that you have that you have that um, material, that skin material that is predefined by the central end. It's actually called avatar skin underscore matte. It's, it's a templated naming convention that allows for the, the central and game engine to switch out the skin color, no matter what it is. If, if it's on the feet, whether it's on the fingers, on the face, if you change the skin color inside the game, it will also change it everywhere on your avatar, as long as you use that predefined material. So when, you, when you're starting out and you're not familiar with this whole ecosystem of Decentral, and this is something you need to understand. That means that when you create the upper body item where most of the time the skin is exposed on the hands, this is where you have to stick to that predefined material. And uh, yeah, I think this is something that is important to mention because I wasn't aware of that. Uh, unless you create an item that has gloves or something like this, then you would of course be coloring that with a different texture, not with that skin material. But for the most part, most people want to keep this 
as it is on the base avatar that you download from GitHub. And you really just work with every other component of the mesh. Okay, so for those guys who are not at all familiar with avatar design, um, and I think one interesting fact is that when you're working on a shirt that is under the jacket, let's say, you don't actually have the full mesh for the invisible component of the shirt. You really only work with what's visible. And what's under the jacket, you don't actually have to create that mesh. Uh, I, I was playing around with the idea of creating a full, fully fledged out shirt under the jacket. But then again, you don't have that slot that you could distinguish between the shirt and the jacket. They would both have to be on the upper body slot. So this doesn't really work. So we kept it one item. And the bow tie could theoretically have been an accessory, but there is no slot for that particular body part. So you would have to allocate it to some kind of other accessories related to the head. And I wasn't sure if this would, this would have been approved by the review team. And also this would have required an additional 500 mana for the, you know, for the extra slot to be submitted for review. So it would have made the whole project even more expensive. So yeah, by the way, each item that you submit for review will cost you 500 mana. So this project costed uh, 1500 mana to submit for review and I'm gonna show you how this works in a second um, is there anything else on the on the blender component well let's quickly talk again about the uh, about the triangle limitation so for each item you have 1500 triangles available to you so this particular jacket let me see Okay, so this is not the actual this is not the actual export file that I used. So there is a uh, there is a huge number of triangles there. I don't even know why did I open this one. I think this was only for visual support. Actually, we were. Let me see how many triangles. The upper part. Can we still see this? I will open this in the editor. Uh, Sorry guys, one second. So this upper part has 1,372 triangles. So in theory, we could have still added a little bit more detail to it. Uh, the, there is a, a texture limit of two textures. So you cannot go completely crazy. Uh, for the men's shoes, men's shoes are an accessory and there the limit is 500 triangles so here we did go a little bit over the limit but it was it was accepted which is great and the same is true for pens 1500 triangles was the limit we were way under the limit so generally speaking we were very economical with the triangle usage in theory we could have included more details here but um, I'm quite happy with the details that we have this is a suit, so maybe, you know, I think with other uh, wearable ideas, you will actually really go at the edge of your limit for each slot. Okay, guys, so this is this whole, and actually haven't switched off the Blender window, so you haven't seen some of the stuff that I was showing here. So basically, I was talking here about the jacket, about the pants, about the shoes, and about the triangle count that you can see here. Uh, sorry about that. All right, so this is um, hmm, this is the whole blender story. Uh, if you are able to weight paint skin, and if you are able to manipulate the mesh, I think the only thing that caused us trouble was clipping. Clipping is another vocabulary you will hear a lot in this space. I wasn't familiar with it. Clipping means when one mesh of one object overlaps with another mesh of another object and this happens when you actually move let me quickly show you one movement here if you go for the no that's not the one let's go for the fist bump so here you can see that when you make these type of movements 
the upper component inevitably intersects with the lower component. And you want to make sure that this visually works. Initially, we had that issue that that jacket would overlap with the pants even in the idle position. And this, you know, was a no-go. Also, we had some issues when sitting down where, where the back of the jacket would inter interfere with the pants. And to a degree, this is really inevitable because um, you would really have to open up the jacket and you and you would have to make it a lot wider and then you would risk of a contact with the sleeves so you're really in that range where you need to kind of fine calibrate all of the items to work together with all available movements today and you kind of also have to think in the future if we will have more aggressive moves let's say will that wearable support that or not and I think it's great to actually test this in world as well. And let me show you how you do that. So let's quickly uh, wrap up. You come up with the idea, you come up with some kind of first draft inside a digital software to create a suit. Then you download the sample file from the GitHub and then you start manipulating that sample avatar inside Blender to look like your design. You assign the different slots, you save those objects into a .glb file, export it from Blender onto your desktop as a .glb file, and uh, now you have your project pretty much ready to go, and now you need to import it into Decentraland and submit it for review. And let's quickly go through that process as well. Let's see what could be useful here. So. By the way, you need to check out the documentation on decentraland.org. You will find a lot of these details there as well. It's, it's absolutely necessary to go through this. In the beginning, when you're just starting out, a lot of that does not make a whole lot of sense. But once you get into this whole process, you will actually start coming back here and you will find those answers that you need to find. Um, I'm looking for the builder here. All right. So this is the view where you can create a collection. So when you have your .glb files exported from Blender onto the desktop, let's say, now you want to bring those files inside the builder. And for that, you need to create a new collection. And inside a new collection, you will create a new item. And for each new item, you will import that .glb file from your desktop into here. And you will actually then see that item and it will you will have to you know put in a little bit of metadata to each of the objects let me pick this one here and go to open in editor so there are a couple of things that you will need to fill in here um, the most important component is really the slot where you want to put in to which you want to assign your wearable so if you're creating a top you want to assign it to the upper body and these kind of re reflect exactly what we see here in the backpack. So I think if you have used the central end before, you will feel very comfortable selecting a category here, a slot to which to assign your wearable. The replace function is kind of important because you want to make sure that if someone dresses your upper top item, that the previously dressed item is replaced by your item. So you can always kind of select the, the corresponding slot in the replaces section here. I think this is pretty straightforward. If you're creating pants, you want to replace pants. If you're creating a hat, you want to replace a hat. Uh, now, in certain situations, and we haven't faced that, but it, it's obvious that when you create, let's say, something for the head or when you create glasses or when you create hair you may want to work with the heights functionality as well because sometimes when you create a head you may want to hide the hair so there are no clipping issues no overlaps um, there are certain situations i'm just trying to think of a good example 
sometimes you see items that did not pay attention to that detail where you put on a mask and you have a beard overlapping with that mask and actually I have an example for this I think with this particular skeleton head if I actually have facial hair this is uh, this is what happens and I don't know if um, I think they have missed the setting of hiding the facial hair when you put on the mask and this is the outcome that you have and this is not great and in order to avoid that you really need to you need to think this these settings through but this is really only if you are creating some kind of something for the head area for for pants for a shirt and for shoes I do not see a scenario where you have to worry about that. For the tags, I thought initially not to include anything, then I just included my name. Uh, it will probably make it easier to search inside the search engine in the future. If you're creating a lot of these items, you can just type in your name and find all of your creations. I thought this is kind of a neat idea to include that. A rarity is a tough one. I think this is an important decision. It's an important strategic decision um, what kind of rarity type you pick. Of course you can pick a unique rarity type, but remember you're paying 500 mana per item, so if you create a unique one you will be the only one wearing it unless you want to sell the only version of it. If you create 100 items or 10 items, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a tough choice. Initially I, I thought user-generated content should be limited to 10 items. But I didn't think it should be thrown in into the same pool like the existing mythics. So I thought it would be best to actually create a separate rarity type that would allow you to create 10 items. But this DAO proposal was not very popular with uh, some team members, so it kind of went under. So now, if you don't have a separate rarity category into which you can mint the user-generated content, you kind of have to mint it into the existing rarity category. So initially I thought 10 would be great because it keeps the supply of your item very limited. But then again, if you're paying 500 mana and you get to only put 10 items into the world of which one you want to keep, you really have very little supply that you have to sell at a much higher price um, if you are into the commercial side of things. So most people pick legendary because then you have a hundred items and the supply is somewhat limited in the long term. And people who choose a thousand or five thousand mints, I don't know what their plan is. I mean you could theoretically come up with a strategy where this makes sense, where you want to give it away very cheaply or a, for free or when you wanna yeah I mean it's it really depends on how Decentraland is going to develop it might be a very good idea to actually create a thousand items for 500 mana because maybe these rarity types are going to lose in importance because there is so much user-generated content so I'll leave this up to you what you pick I eventually settled for Legendary um, and almost went for Mythic. Yeah, we'll see. For the description, I mean, I included here a cool message. Most people don't include anything. Naming convention, super important. Um, yeah, and maybe one important component that I would like to mention is you can create custom thumbnails. Now this thumbnail that you see here is auto-generated. Sometimes it's perfect, sometimes it's less perfect. I do not necessarily like how the top items are being displayed here. You do, like It excludes the skin because we are using that generic skin material so it's making it see-through. And then also that T position with your arms spread makes it very small on the thumbnail and I do not think it's a good idea to keep it this way so what I did for the men's tuxedo we actually had a custom blender file where we changed the body position of the hands 
and we exported this and then I changed the contrast and just optimized the image a little bit to make it look good on the thumbnails because these thumbnails are visible on all of the marketplaces they are visible inside the game engine itself so you want to make sure that you know you, you make the best job possible to make that stuff look good and I think also that it should fit together with the original Decentraland items. It should fit in nicely, seamlessly into the experience. So this is exactly what I did as well. Okay, so once you have imported all of the items, the, all of the GLB files into the collection, you have named them and classified them properly, you essentially are ready to... Um, Submit this for review. Now you may also want to add price here if you want to make this ready for the vending machine. But um, you're now ready to submit this to the Decentraland review team. And this is also the moment where you will have to pay the fee. For each item 500 mana, I paid 1500 mana, submitted it for review. And once you do that, once that item is submitted for review, a, uh, a, 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 a forum post, and good that I found it, is generated for the communication between the review team and yourself. So this is not a place where people vote or discuss the quality of your work. Some people may be as friendly as some of these guys who come over and leave a nice comment if they like your work. But more importantly, you will get comments from the review team if something needs to be fixed before it's approved. And we had one little fix, not on the actual wearables, but on the thumbnail images, because these were the initial thumbnail images that I had. And while I thought they were kind of cool and different from what everyone else had, there was actually an issue with those. And the issue was that it wasn't necessarily clear what you're getting when you buy an item like this. For example, here you have pens, and you have a little bit of shoes visible at the bottom and now it's not clear if you're actually getting only the pants or also the shoes and are these actually pants or what are these so it's important to single out the items and make them distinct and clear what they are because sometimes the name gets truncated in the UI and you don't necessarily know you cannot necessarily read what it is and then if you cannot also see what it is, then it becomes really difficult for the user. So we end up changing these three images into very clear, beautiful thumbnails, custom thumbnails. Took some extra effort, but I mean, this was definitely a great tip from the review team. I'm so glad we did this. And I see a lot of people are not optimizing these thumbnails, and I think... They're really losing out on an easy win here. So once it's submitted for review, you can follow the, um, the forum post. After a couple of days, if you have nothing much to fix, you will eventually be approved. And then you can start minting items. You can click on the mint option here. You can define an Ethereum ad address to mint that stuff into and you define how many pieces you want to mint so if you, you pretty much have the right of uh, to mint 100 pieces if you select the legendary type and I have um, decided to mint 10 out of the 100 and that's it it's pretty simple you click on mint and then you get those 10 items into defined address yeah, is there anything else? Yes, there is the sale function. If you select the on sale, you will be able to sell these items in a vending machine. I actually never used the vending machine and there was one sale that uh, went through through that vending machine and what I didn't know is it, that it's auto-minting stuff from your supply maximum. Uh, I wasn't quite aware of that, otherwise I wouldn't have switched it on, but it happened, so just be aware of that, that it will mint from your limits automatically if you activate that option and this is it guys like this is the whole process um, hopefully this was useful 
do subscribe to the channel leave me a comment hit the like button do the good stuff to support this channel we've been growing quite nicely over the last couple of months hopefully we can get some more people on board and uh uh, let's see. I think there is more stuff to come from my side on this conversation here. I think it's also important that we speak about some of the economics and about the marketplace of these wearables on, on, on the uh, layer 2. Uh, an exciting time in the central. And guys, thanks for watching. Peace out and I see you soon. Bye.